Hello guys. So in this section, we're going to set up our normal and also going to set up our occlusions so that we can pass that into our PBR shader and have more depth on our shader graph jelly material. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just fix some slight things that I feel might make our graph a bit better. So first for our albedo group right here, for our uh, tiling and offset, this vector two right here, if we set this value to 4, it will actually give us a nice uh, scroll. And I don't want it to scroll horizontally, so I'll set this value to 0. right? So we can change this value. So the good way to do that is just to create a property for this. So let's just go ahead and go to the blackboard. And let's create a vector 2. And it's going to be the just right here. Let's just call this noise value. And we'll just set that to, say, a value of uh, of 6, just for the y. So the uh, x is going to be uh, 0. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And just right here, we could just set this into the tiling. So we have the same thing, but now we have the uh, ability to change that in the uh, properties. So that is going to be reflected on the material and we'll have this uh, scroll. So the next thing I want to fix is the emission color. So if we look at the emission color, there's the uh, noise cell. We can't, we actually have to set this and go back to the shader, which is not cool. So let's go ahead and create a property for the emission color noise. So to do that, let's go ahead and go to our blackboard. Let's create a vector one. And once we have that, let's call that uh, emission color noise. And this time around, let's create a slider. So let's go to the uh, default, let's say slider, and let's set a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of say uh, 200, just like that. So once we click on that, we could just drag our emission color noise and we could just drag that into our scale. So if we actually look at that, it's uh, going to be blank. That's because we haven't set the uh, values in it. So let's go back to our blackboard and look for our emission color noise. That's right here. And let's set a minimum value to like 56 for a start, just like that. And we can go ahead and change that in any uh, point, right? So that's uh, that's that for that. So and then what we'd also like to change is for our uh, our albedo group. So if we look at our albedo group on our multiply node, we actually have our tiling going in both directions. That's because uh, we haven't actually set the speed and we've set the speed to be a, uh, a vector one. Let's go ahead and change our speed to a vector two. So what I'd like to do is to just detach this and just delete that. So once we delete that, we can see like it's actually using a vector one value and we don't want that. So let's just go ahead and delete this and let's create a vector two. So let's say a vector and let's select a vector two. So our x axis is going to be zero and our y axis, let's you know, make it slide from bottom to top. So let's use minus 1.68. And let's go ahead and just slide that value in. You can set any value you actually want. That's totally fine. And we can actually see that. So let's try uh, and slow this down. Let's try uh, 687. We can actually change this value later on if we want, if we want a slower uh, value. Let's try minus 0 0.6. Yeah, I think it's kind of slower now. Let's try uh, 0 0.3, which is actually good. So I like 0 0.3. So let's change this to a property. We'll right click and say convert to property. And we'll call that albedo group scroll. Right, so let's go to our blackboard. We have the vector two. Let's just rename that to albedo scroll. 
it's actually nice to actually do that so we can always um, you know see our values and change them within the shader so this is uh, super nice we can collapse this if we want so let's go ahead and create our uh, albedo uh, texture setup so we're just going to create a uh, for our noise right so we want to create values for our noise and our normals so let's go ahead and create a sample texture too so let's just get down here and just create a sample texture too a sample texture node rather and let's also create a texture to the asset and we'll just slide that texture to the asset whoops we'll just slide it in to the texture node so now that we have this let's go ahead and duplicate this set and let's say duplicate and we'll just drag that down like this that's very awesome so we want to uh, assign this for our normal so let's go ahead and convert this to a property and just right where it says the uh, texture 2d it's going to be the last one let's just call it our, our normal texture and just from the properties we can actually select a texture so it depends on the normal you want I'll just use ground normal but you can actually change this to any normal if you have an external normal that's going to be fine so we've set that to the ground normal and what I'm also going to do is to create a value for our occlusion right so let's just go ahead and do that right now let's get rid of this and quickly we could just drag this into our normal so let's just drag this up here and just go up here we can actually set this anywhere we want it's so totally fine and just drag this to our normal all right and we can set this to an object space all right, so let's go ahead and create the uh, inputs for our occlusion. So we can actually do the same thing we did. We'll change this to a property. So let's right click and say convert to property. And let's go to our blackboard and scroll down to the last one. And just change our reference name to our AO. Oops, that's our ambient occlusion texture and let's select a texture so we can use either use the metallic the uh, paint and a mask or the albedo let's try the albedo smoothness or let's use the paint metallic mask because I kind of like that one so uh, let's just go ahead and close this and we'll just drag that into our occlusion you can create as many maps as you want and if you want you can actually you know get rid of your masks sit and so we're actually having uh, this shape right now so this is what we're having so we can actually go ahead and change this and change some values so we'll actually uh, do that and uh, fix some of the errors we're getting and uh, that will bring us to the end of this uh, material that's how we can actually create this material it all depends on how you want it to look and how you want to tweak and set your values so once again, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll tweak this material and make it actually appear much more neater.